So I've been doing a few other things, really making progress on my leveling. You can see we're well on our way. Uh, using lots of methods to level between Boja and Beast Tribes and Challenge Log and Dungeons. It's just, it's a little slow. It's going to be slow, but we're making good progress. But at this point, let's get some history lessons going here. Though it had no taste, the ice cream was a treat for the eyes. I'm glad it served to ease the tension. That went really well. And you, Zalera, your sense of balance is something else. <laughs> Zalera, Raha, Lamati. With your help, I was able to not only bond with my parents, but know the joy of sharing a meal with them besides. For that, and so much else, so much else, I thank you. You're welcome, my dear. As my parents told us, the cavern inside the volcano is a place for learning about the Malala's ancient homeland. But I'm hoping it will yield other information as well. Namely, information on preservation. Preservation. The scientists who were researching interdimensional fusion. And prior to that, created the Endless. As living memory is likely also their creation, I expect they would carefully curate any details concerning themselves, but I wish to keep an eye out nonetheless. I'm all for it, of course. Seeing as the key once belonged to the Malala, it couldn't hurt to learn about them. Right then, let's head inside. Agreed. Let's go. So this is how it is in here. This place has the look of an ancient ruin. But I suppose it's an illusion as well. Okay, uh, before we hit the destination, we've got four tablets to read. Oh. These panels contain information about the Malola. It's very much like a museum. Okay, here we go. The panel bears information on the history of the Malala. In the distant past, the Malala abided in peace upon isles of eternal summer. Winter never visited that bountiful land, and the flowers ever bloomed in all the colors of the rainbow. But such idyllic, idyllic days did not last, for just when it seemed the westerly wind had turned cold, the seas suddenly froze over. From the fish in the water to the birds in the sky, all of the animals soon perished. This unnatural weather continued with seemingly no end, and one by one the Milala fell until the death toll was beyond counting. Those who lived still could do naught but pray as they huddled together for precious warmth. So that's the that's the ice calamity. Okay. The Malala are the keepers of a mighty relic passed down through the ages. While it has the appearance of a crystal, by whose hand it was wrought is unknown. When a great calamity froze their isles, the speaker, their spiritual leader, fervently prayed to the relic for salvation. In answer to their prayers, the relic opened for them a golden path, one that shone like the light of dawn, and through it they fled unto a new land. So that's their escape to this other reflection. Since ancient times, the Malala have excelled in calculations. By using formulae and figures to represent all natural phenomena, they had succeeded in devising a unique system of magic. This gift proved invaluable in their new homeland, where they employed their calculations to etch arcane circuits upon the ore which later came to be known as Electro. 
Through this ingenious technique, Electrope was transformed into a tool that could not only store lightning, but convert it into energy of any element. So there you have it. The, the Malala are responsible for the creation of Electrope. They are arcanists. They brought the arcane arts from the source to this other reflection, which is why they are almost identical as Graha mentioned earlier. Esteemed for their excellence in the study of Electrope, the Malala were favored by the rulers of many a nation. Some among them have attempted to invoke the power of their ancient relic to return to their homeland, but their efforts were to no avail. Never again has the golden path opened that allowed their ancestors to flee to safety. Eventually, the relic came to be forgotten, and some now question whether it ever actually existed. So that is the relic that Sphine took. That cup is that's the relic. Quite a mystical atmosphere here. Is this what the Malala homeland was like? Ding ding, correct! What's going on? The ancient home of the Malala people is recreated here in exacting detail, thanks to the marvel of Electrope. The scale alone has been adjusted, in order to accommodate folk of all proportions. Ah, but I have neglected to introduce myself. I am the guide for this facility, the steps of the speaker. It shall be my pleasure to assist you as you embark upon your educational journey. There's even a guide? How considerate. All right then, as we wander around, if there's something we do not understand, we'll be certain to ask you. Bzzzt, incorrect. Visits to our facility take the form of a quiz tour, so the correct answer is, follow the instructions of your guide. That's yours truly. Sounds like a pain in the ass. <laughs> I'm sure it will be both enlightening and entertaining. Let's have them guide us. <laughs> Very good, madam. I have registered the four of you as visitors. Please proceed through yonder passageway to the chamber beyond. Let's keep moving then. Ooh. The wall is illuminated. It's so beautiful. Judging by the elaborate decoration, this was a place of import to the Malala. Is that a pattern is that pattern a Malala motif? If I may have your attention. You stand within a shrine of the Malala, a migrant people who roamed until they found new lands to call their own. According to folklore, they originally hailed from a paradise of eternal summer. Alas, they had no choice but to abandon it when a great calamity froze the very seas. The speaker, their spiritual leader, guided them to safety, and she is enshrined here with the sacred relic she wielded. In this place, they performed rituals dedicated to the dream that one day they might return to their ancestral home. A sacred relic. That must be the key used to in initiate interdimensional fusion. Interdimensional fusion? 
If such a wondrous power existed, I can only imagine what great feats it could be used to achieve. Now then, it's time for a history quiz. Ugh, here we go. There are four bergiers in this room, each of which is accompanied by a panel bearing a statement. If you believe a statement is true, then you must light its bergier by operating the panel. Simple, yes? Without further ado, please nominate a representative and begin. If there are no objections, let us have Zolera do the honors. Go on and take a look at the panels, my friend. Thanks. Okay. So we need to turn on the ones we think are true. Owing to our innate gift in arcane calculations, we Malala not only transformed to land, but excelled in its study, despite being outside of favor by the rulers of many a nation. That's true. When lightning threatened our world meal, Malala turned to our relic once more. Invoking its power, we opened a portal and returned to our ancient home. No, that's not true. Okay, Brigier of the Relic. Praying fervently upon the sacred relic, the speaker opened a portal through which our people fled. She alone had to remain behind. Nope. Our people dwelled on isles of eternal summer where the flowers ever bloomed. The climate turned to the bounteous waters to bear an ice. Yep. Okay, I think we got her. Remember, you must like the Bergiers whose statements you believe are true. Are you ready for your answers to be judged? Yes. Very well. Let the judging begin. You have answered correctly, and on your very first attempt besides. Amazing. Great work, Solera. I knew you could do it. Taken at face value, the information here would suggest that the Malala had simply migrated from a distant land. But we know better. We are aware of the existence of shard worlds, umbral calamities, and interdimensional fusion. For an event that froze the seas, the fifth umbral calamity comes to mind. That which ushered in the age of the of endless frost. And legend holds that during that age, the entire population of the South Sea Isles vanished overnight. Ooh, that's what I thought. I was South Sea Isles. I was sure of it. The art of art of Arcan Arcanuma too traces its roots to the calculations of the South Sea Islanders. While we cannot outright conclude that these people were the Malalas. There are at least enough points of similarity to support the theory. <clears throat> if you have mused to your satisfaction, let us move to the next chamber. Another quiz awaits. Yay! How many of these quizzes are there? Enough to be annoying, probably. <laughs> What could these masks represent, I wonder? They look... Asian, almost, in a sense. A little bit. What's with all these massive faces? There appear to be a few expressions for these masks. We have come to the most enigmatic location in the museum. While it is known as the Speaker's Rest, everything else remains a mystery. No one knows what purpose it served, not even the Malala themselves. That's rather curious. Isn't it, though? Some have suggested that this place is purely the creation of the facility's designer, that it didn't actually exist in the Malala homeland. It's generally believed, however, that the adornments upon the wall are masks that represent the emotions of men. And that brings us to the final quiz. The question is simple. How many types of masks are there? It's the last one already? Hmm, something tells me it's not going to be as simple as it sounds. 
Please take all the time you require. I shall be here when you are ready with the answer. Crap. Okay. Uh... One... Two... Three... I think the answer is three. Many kinds of determined an answer. Three. Ah, oh, I was wrong. One, two. Missing something? Like, I only see. Okay. Okay, so there's the kind of funny part of the bottom one. This guy kind of has the swirly eyes and the hooks on the mouth. Kind of like this one. This has swirly eyes, but kind of upwards, swir uh, upward swirls. Hooks, hooks. I don't... Oh! There's a fourth kind. It's four. I didn't see that one over there. How about everyone? There we go. Seriously? I thought it was six. Like Zalera, I also believe it is four. As do I. And the correct answer is... Four. Congratulations to the three of you. Damn it. Where the hells did I mess up? That's what I said. <laughs> and that concludes the quiz tour for the steps of the speaker. I thank you for your visit today and eagerly look forward to your next. Finished at last. Gods, I am exhausted. If the legend is true, the Malala were refugees from the source. But what is this relic of theirs that can bridge worlds? Who made it? And to what end? Much about the key remains shrouded in mystery. By augmenting it with Electrope, Preservation did succeed in opening a portal. Yet they could never grasp how they had managed to do so, much less the underlying principles of the technology. To this day, not a single person understands the mechanics of interdimensional fusion, let alone who imbued the key with its power, when they did so, or why. But remember this. The key is a tool, and like all tools, in and of itself, it is a force for neither good nor evil. Once taken in hand, however, its capacity for both is made plain. In delivering one man, it may doom another, making a lie of its bearer's every good intention. As did preservation, Queen Sveen seeks to wield the key in the name of those she loves. And in so doing, makes her people party to the destruction of countless souls. We have told you all we can to be able to share this with you at the last. It feels as though we fulfilled our purpose.
You've come to shut down the terminal. Yes, we have. But perhaps there's another way, one that doesn't require the terminal's deactivation. For the longest time, we've sought a means to erase ourselves before our knowledge could be used for ill. And in you, we have found it. So press on. Press on, and don't look back. I will. Um... May I ask you one last question? Of course, my dear. The earring... Why did you leave it with me? Because, Kryle, we wanted to see you again. This may seem self-serving, but we wanted to leave a trace of ourselves with you. A hint to guide you to us, so that we could live in hope. We've dreamed of this day for so long, but now that it's become reality, we wonder if we deserve to enjoy it. We wanted naught but the best for you, yet we've always wondered how much you might have suffered in our absence. Do not torment yourself so. As fate would have it, you entrusted me to a good man. His name is Galaf, and he raised me as his own. What's more, I've been blessed with the finest comrades anyone could have. It's thanks to you that I am here now. Hail and happy. So please, be at peace. Be at peace. Mother. Father. <laughs> you already have a beautiful name, but if we might call you by the one we gave you? Maya. Our dearest Maya. We love you more than life itself. Maya. My, my name... My name is Maya. Oh, Kryol slash Maya. Are you sure about this? You can leave the terminal to us, you know. No, I must do this. Kryl Maya Baldessian must press on. <sighs> press on and... Farewell, Mother. Farewell, Father. Farewell. Oh, man. 
she was she finally got her answers only to have to say goodbye right away excuse me while I get the vista uh, I'm working on sage right now there we go it's very pretty it's just again heavy and sad if I may confide in you Zalera I've been anxious ever since I chose to accompany you to Tyrell. I was afraid of what I might discover. Perhaps I'd learn nothing, or worse, that my parents didn't love me. But now I know the truth, and I couldn't be happier. I'm glad I took up Pictomancy, and I'm glad I ma mustered up the courage to say that I wanted to join you. Thank you, Zalera, for trusting me with your life and walking with me all this way. Well, that's all I wanted to say. I'll see this through. Rather, we'll see this through. Together. My apologies for keeping you. Come, let's catch up to the others. Oh, Kryl. Aaronville isn't here yet. Worry not, I shall be fine. Lovely people, Robar and Alela. The others have told me all. I'm glad Kryle could bid her parents a proper farewell. Now then, to ask this question for the second to last time. Are you ready to shut down the terminal? Yeah. No. You know how to do it. I do. Is done. Still not saying nothing. Just one zone remaining. Now that Elanishpia has joined us, let's head to the last zone. Oops. Their memories may be gone, but their love will be with me, always. Are you all right, Kryle? I am. I chose to forge on no forge on no matter what. And I've had the courage to do so because of you all. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Whew. Next we have to part with, she says. Yeah. 
<sighs> I must say, the closer we get to the end, the faster time seems to pass us by. Come, let us let's head to to the fourth and final zone. By now, you know how to get there. Yes. Yes, we do. Excellent. This time, I'd like to quickly check on the Meso Terminal, so I'll meet you at the Gate of Remembrance. Come on, everyone. Oh boy. We are edging ever closer. Ever closer. Okay. Still not saying nothing. So this is it. Like before, it will be hard, but we must honor Kefquia's Kefquia's wish. Wish. Blech. Oh, Aaron Bill. As far as I can tell, we still have some lee leeway with the Meso Terminal. Meaning you can carry on getting to know the Endless in the last zone. Windspath Gardens, it's called, and it's breathtakingly beautiful. That's where your memories are stored, yes? That's right. I left it for last so I could guide you for as long as possible. Very thoughtful of me, yes? A great idea just occurred to me. What might that be? <laughs> I'll save it for after we've arrived on the other side. See you there. Her great ideas are generally less than great. Hey. Aaronville, as much as I want to grant your mother her wish, I also want to respect yours. When all said and done, I want you to be happy. I hope you know this. I know. I know. Kefquia isn't only his mother, she's his mentor as well. That can only make it harder for him to say goodbye. Let's go. For now, we keep doing what we've been doing. Seeking out Endless and learning what's dear to them. Okay. Time to open the last zipline. Let's not keep Kefquia right waiting. Have faith in Aaronville's inner strength. What could this great idea of Kefquia's be? It's not. Uh... Okay, it's gonna be the same thing. Air, air, blah, blah, blah. Greetings and welcome to Windspath Gardens, the sanctuary of exploration and discovery. The marvels of the natural world await you. If I could have everyone's attention, 
I know we have pressing business, but I'd like to say a few words. Before I died, I had two wishes. The first was to see who my Elaneshpia would become. I would say that wish has been fulfilled. Indeed, it has. For the boy who once shunned company has returned a somewhat sociable man, surrounded by wonderful friends. As his mother and mentor both, I couldn't be more proud. Mom, you're embarrassing me. As for my second wish, <laughs> that was to see all manner of nature that I had never seen before. I hoped to explore every corner of the world and there find thriving life. <laughs> but I didn't even get to see all of Tural, did I? <laughs> Never enough hours in a day, or days in a year, or years in a life. Kafkiwa. Don't give me that look. Though, admittedly, I did go and spoil the mood. Apologies. What I was so poorly trying to work up to asking was this. I want you to help me fulfill my second wish. I have a good feeling about this place. There is so much here I've never seen before, I just know it. We'd love to see it with you. I thought you might say that. Thank you. Windspath Gardens is home to a collection of flora and fauna that once thrived on the continent. Like the rest of living memory, I haven't explored it in earnest. Controlling my vessel demanded all of my attention. But at long last, I'll get to meet the creatures here. Wrap things up with a perfect little adventure. So, shall we? Absolutely not. We're to grant you your wish, and then what? You leave. You cannot ask that of me. Oh, Ellen Nespia. Please understand. I just wanted to end on a happy note. Not only for myself, but for all of us. Better that than a sad goodbye, surely. Poor Aaronville. Can't even imagine. Sanctuary of Exploration. The Sanctuary of Exploration and Discovery. Quite fitting that Kafkuya's memories are here. And nothing. Let's help Kafkuya make some great memories. How very like Kafkuya to chase her dreams to the last. Then with your consent, let's begin our adventure. Naturally, while we go about this, feel free to continue befriending Endless, and be sure to absorb the delightful scenery. It is pretty. It is very, very pretty. Let's see... Anything... I'm 
just checking to see if there's an ether current down here. Wouldn't surprise me if there was. What a lovely garden! The scenery here is nothing short of remarkable. To think that Sveen has managed to preserve it for the Endless. I somehow anticipated this. I thought those things were some sort of enormous tree, but they're actually sculptures. Oh. Yeah, I guess so, aren't they? Oh, whoops. This particular garden is called Blooms of Discovery. Beautiful, isn't it? It's absolutely stunning. And they are all actual plants? They are indeed. These specimens were brought here hundreds of years ago for conservation, as the calamity had pushed them to the brink of extinction. So this zone is like a great conservatory. Precisely, my dear Kryle. Here you'll find flora and fauna, the likes of which no longer exist elsewhere. Doesn't the thought just set your heart to flutter? I suppose. I expect that some creatures I encountered outside of Tural may have cousins in this world. While I am no expert on life on in the reflections, it would make for an interesting study to compare them. Now there's an idea. Leave it to my pupil to think of such. Here we have not only the, a world's traversing adventurer and a veteran gleaner, but a pair of Charlian's finest scholars besides. It's a veritable gathering of, of inquisitiveness, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. And Wuklamat. We also have Wuklamat. <laughs> To begin with, I'd like you to scout out the vicinity and report back with any points of note. This would be a good opportunity to speak with the locals. They're bound to be familiar with the area, after all. As El Neshpia suggested, it would be interesting to compare the creatures here with those native to the source. I never ventured outside of Tural, so I look forward to your insights. Just leave it to us. I've only been to Charlie and myself, but I'd like to think I know interesting when I see it. Alright. Of everyone, I dare say you've been the, to the most places. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts. Okay. That's not far. Oh, hello there. What am I doing, you ask? Look up the trunk. See the plants with capsules? These are species that either can't survive in Windspath Gardens or would become invasive and disrupt the ecosystem. The capsules recreate the conditions they require, from tropical to frigid climes, while keeping them isolated. In this way, any and all plant life can be preserved forever, just like ourselves. Oh. Oh, okay, so each of those capsules has something, it's a controlled environment that has so a plant in it of some sort. Okay. You 
see a creature wandering about that resembles the treants native to the Twelve Sword. I mean, it's pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> Did you know that even the water here is created using Electrope? The initial product is too pure, though, and adjustments have to be made so the composition resembles what's found in the natural environment. That's just one of the many things they do to create the ideal conditions for these plants to thrive. I don't know what's become of the world outside the barrier, but I should like to visit a lovely spot such as this in real life. Speaking of lovely spots, have you been to the top of this lookout here? It's a great vantage point, and there's even a food stall in case you're hungry. Hey, food! The flower garden appears to be meticulously maintained, if not by endless, then by machines. Last one is up, which will also grab the final etherite. My ancestors aren't really a actually Alexandrian, but hailed from a place called Condepeti. Condepeti. They had some unique customs there. For instance, when greeting someone, you had to say lally ho in a spirited manner. <laughs> Our settlement was also famous for a gigantic tree that grew nearby. It was so enormous that when you stood at its base, the roots covered the ground and went beyond the horizon. The terminal here at Windspath Gardens is apparently inspired by that very tree, the Aoife tree that its name was. It may not be real, but it's nice to have it as a memento to, for, poster, for posterity. The... That is not even just subtle, that's an in-your-face here, you better know your FF9 or you're not getting that reference. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really don't want this to end. Really, I enjoy this area so much. Ow. There was a beast I had never seen before. While the arboretums of Charlian imitate natural environs, this place has a feel of an exhibit. In that sense, the word gardens does suit it well. Welcome back, Zalera. Kryle has just delivered to me a most fascinating report. You have some engaging impressions to share too, I hope. Well, well, that is all very interesting indeed. But I must say, I am most fascinated by the ambulating trees. While there are similar creatures in Urkopacha, could you tell me more about these treants as you know them? Um, they like to hurl acorns at you, exploding ones. <laughs> Is that so? 
to maintain an ecosystem with such formidable creatures, I imagine there must be other equally imposing species to keep them in check. The management of ecosystems. That calls to mind Labyrinthus, does it not? That it does. Lest you wonder, Labyrinthus is a storage facility deep beneath Charlian that contains a recreation of a temperate climate zone. Such a place exists! Amazing! By the by, did anyone also catch sight of the large of a large scale kin? A large scale kin, you say? What does it look like? Nothing I've seen before, but it has a rodent-like form and walks on all fours. If it looks like a rodent, wouldn't that make it a beastkin? No, it's covered in scales, ones that appear to mimic succulent plants. By that, I would definitely classify it as a scalekin. Well, it's hard to say for certain without seeing it. Why don't you show me? Very well. It was in a flower field earlier, it, and should still be near. Let's head over there then. When we find it, we'll see who's right. The two of you should come along, too, and lend us your opinions. Go on ahead, Zalara. I'll let the others know, and then join you. <laughs> 